This is Katherine Schmer at Chattanooga State Community College, and this video covers integrals of vector functions. If the components of the vector function r of t equals f of t i plus g of t j plus h of t k are integrable over the interval a b, then so is vector r and the definite integral of r from a to b is the integral from a to b of r of t dt equals the integral of each component separately. So the integral of um, f of t dt from bounds a to b, and that will be your i component, plus the integral from a to b of g of t dt j, plus the integral from a to b of h of t dt k. So we take the integral of each component separately and then um, put it into a vector function. In this example, we are asked to evaluate the integral from 1 to 2 of 6 minus 5 ti plus 3 square root of tj plus secant squared of tk dt. So my first step is to do it component wise. So this is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of 6 minus 5 t dt i plus the integral from 1 to 2 of 3t to the 1 half dt j. Notice I'm writing the square root of t as t to the 1 half, so I can just use my power rule of integration. Plus the integral from 1 to 2 of secant squared t dt k. So the i component will become 6t minus 5 halves t squared evaluated from 1 to 2 and that's my i component. My j component is 3 times 2 thirds t to the 3 halves evaluated from 1 to 2 and my j component is tangent of t evaluated from 1 to 2. Now I plug in my upper bound minus the antiderivative with my lower bound plugged in. So I have 6 times 2 minus 5 halves times 2 squared minus, with the lower bound, 6 times 1 minus 5 halves times 1 squared. That will give me my i component. My j component will be, um, I, first I'll simplify a little, the 3's cancel. So I have 2 times 2 to the 3 halves minus 2 times 1 to the 3 halves, and that's my j component. And my k component is tangent of 2 minus tangent of 1. So remember that's f of b minus f of a when you're doing definite integrals. So the i component simplifies to negative 3 halves i. The j component simplifies to 2 to the 5 halves minus 2. And the k component simplifies to tangent of 2 minus tangent of 1. So that is my integral of the vector function that I was given. Negative 3 halves i plus parentheses 2 to the 5 halves minus 2, close the parentheses, j, plus parentheses tangent of 2 minus tangent of 1, close the parentheses, k. So just remember you're always doing it component wise. The i component gets integrated, then the j component gets integrated, then the k component gets integrated separately. So now what do we do if we um, do not have bounds? So we have an indefinite integral. The indefinite integral of r with respect to t is the set of all antiderivatives of r denoted by the integral of vector r of t dt. So you're going to take the indefinite integral of each component. 
This example asks us to solve the initial value problem for r as a function of t. So the differential equation that we're given is dr dt equals the quantity t cubed plus 4t quantity i plus tj plus 2t squared k. And the initial condition that we're given is r of 0 equals i plus j. So the first thing we want to do is find r of t. So we're going to take the antiderivative of dr dt to get r. So r of t equals the integral of t cubed plus 4t dt, and that's my i component, plus the integral of t dt j plus the integral of 2t squared dt k. So I'm taking the integral of each component separately. So my first component, my i component, will be t to the fourth over 4 plus 2t squared plus a constant. And I'm going to write that constant as c sub 1 because each component will have its own individual constant. So that's my i component, t to the fourth over 4 plus 2t squared plus c sub 1 i. The j component, I'll use the power rule for integrating that one as well. So I'll get t squared over 2 plus c sub 2 j. And my k component is 2 thirds t cubed plus c sub 3 k. So each component gets its own constant. Now I want to use my initial condition to solve for C1, C2, and C3. So my initial condition was R of 0 equals 1i plus 1j plus 0k. I'm writing the 1 in front of the i and the j and the 0 in front of the k just to keep track of what I will actually um, set my different components equal to. So we'll do the i component first. We get 0 to the 4th over 4 plus 2 times 0 squared plus c1 equals 1. And everything zeroes out except for the c sub 1, so we end up with c sub 1 equals 1. Now we want to do the same thing for the j component. So we plug in a 0 for t. So we have 0 squared over 2 plus c sub 2 equals 1. So c sub 2 must equal 1. And now k component, 2 thirds times 0 cubed plus c3 equals 0. So c sub 3 must equal 0. You want to be careful here because you won't always be plugging in a 0. So you won't always have things zeroing out. So you do want to make, sh make sure that you're going through your whole process of plugging in whatever t value you're given and setting it equal to um, whatever number you're given um, in front of each i, j, and k component. Now we can write our final answer. So we have r of t equals t to the fourth over 4 plus 2t squared plus 1 and there's my i component so um, parentheses around the t to the fourth over 4 plus 2t squared plus 1 and then i plus parentheses t squared over 2 plus 1 parentheses j plus 2 thirds t cubed k so there is our um, vector function that we get from solving the initial value problem so things to remember, always do integration of a vector function um, component-wise, so each component separately. And if you're given an initial condition, make sure you plug in your t value and solve for each constant separately.